Welcome to another vintage fishing rail service and repair video. In today's episode, we're going to be working on a uh, Blue Heron series of True Temper reels, uh, the number 327. And the best that I can determine, these were produced in the early to mid 1970s. I know it was in the 1975 catalog, uh, maybe maybe a few years before and and maybe produced uh, some thereafter but uh, basically early to mid 1970s spin cast reel so we're gonna take this apart uh, see if there's anything wrong with it it, it works the, the line pickup uh, releases and the spool comes up and it winds it's a little bit tight but a lot of people wouldn't even notice and just go out and fish with that. But I think once we uh, service this thing, it's going to be real smooth. And uh, we'll see if there's anything wrong with it other than just needing a service. Uh, one thing I am concerned about is, and this is, by the way, uh, a Japanese-made reel. A uh, true temper reel made in Japan. But one thing that has me a little concerned is when I pull off the, you, know, you unscrew the, the cap, uh, I think there's supposed to be a rubber line stop on there. The idea of the line stop is to press the line up against the cap. When you push that button all the way in, and you're just before you release the button to cast, you know the 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 uh, pickup pin is retracted, and so if you don't keep that button pushed in. Your line, your lure is going to fall to, to into the lake or uh, the ground or whatever into the boat. Uh, but as long as that button is pushed in, it's holding the line against the uh, cap. Now it may be that without that, without that rubber piece on there, that when I fully extend. So if you look at the distance between the screwed-on cap and the uh, top of the cap if I push that all the way out it's quite possible that that spinner head would in fact come in contact with the line and push it up against the cap and hold it such that you wouldn't need the the rubber uh, line pickup pin or line uh, line stop but the reason they use those is so that you don't crimp the line by pinching metal against metal and so one possible repair that's sometimes used successfully uh, I know it's done regularly on some Zebcos I've never tried it on a true temper but getting an o-ring from from the hardware store and gluing it onto the spinner head and if it's high enough hopefully it's not too thick but you don't want it too thin such that what you want to happen is that when you press that thumb button and it goes up against the underside of the cap that that the rubber contacts the line before the the metal does so that, that 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 gets between the line and the metal and therefore doesn't potentially crimp or damage the line now what gives me of course i've seen other pictures of the spinner head showing that it has a uh, rubber line stop but i think you can see here if i turn this just right there's a discolored outline here and part of one down here and I think that's where the uh, you can see it right right in there just kind of a discoloration uh, I think that's where the uh, original uh, line stop was adhered to the uh, to the uh, spinner head so I'm, I'm gonna do that as a last step I'm gonna install I'm gonna adhere this o-ring on there and uh, I've sort of checked clearances and stuff. It doesn't impede when you're winding, uh, and it and it does. Like if I put the lid, if I put the cover on, okay, and the and the uh, button is not pushed, 
I've got easy movement here but if I push the button all the way in uh, now obviously I'm not going to be able to wind but and then I try to unscrew the cover it's it's tight which is telling me that that rubber piece is is touching the inside of the cap so I think that 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 wash or that uh, o-ring is going to be fine for this application okay so let's get into the servicing of this thing uh, I'm going to start by removing the nut on the spinner head and removing the spinner head you can see the line pickup mechanism here uh, just needs to be cleaned and lubricated so that'll go in the parts bin and then to remove the spool you've just got a an e-clip here that one's not all the way installed uh, but there's your e-clip and then you're gonna have a brass or sorry copper I assume it's copper and not zinc or some other alloy but that's a thin somebody's nicked that all up getting the getting the e-clip on and off and then underneath that you're gonna have some kind of a fiber drag washer that we can hopefully get off of there without ripping it there it comes so a fiber drag washer and a copper one put those in the parts tray and then we should be able to just pull the spool off and we're going to find another fiber drag washer and another copper washer and then the pressure plate and of course here you have uh, a drag clicker sometimes I like to bend those up a little bit because they get sprung and just bend them up a little bit and uh, and that's what engages the cogs on the underside of the spool to make the sound when your drag is being uh, when your drag is being engaged so this pressure plate has a little tab on it that fits into this screw head and of course like others of these if you turn your drag of course that would be stationary when you got your little tab in there but uh, when you turn your drag uh, you can see that that start to pop out so I'm increasing drag now so it's popping out and it's putting pressure on this pressure plate which is putting pressure on the drag stack and creating drag so uh, uh, when I'm working on a wheel always on a reel I always have that drag totally disengaged it makes uh, uh, reassembly especially that much uh, easier and less likely to damage something but you can see this this uh, post here for this uh, spool is all boogered up and there's lots of gashes in there and that's probably from people trying to take off the the e-clip and put it back on when they've got the drag engaged and so the spool doesn't fit down tightly enough and it doesn't leave enough of a you know doesn't expose that uh, notch well enough and people try to shove that e-clip in there and they've got it all boogered up you can see that if you tried to put the e-clip in this way it's going to hit that piece of metal that's out of place there and it's not going to go in and you hope that there's no burrs on this thing that's going to affect the the spinning of the spool on there when the drag is engaged so uh, uh, so the next thing I think we'll do is remove the side plate Well, it looks like this uh, screw is going to act in part as the hinge uh, on which the thumb button operates so that ought to be a slightly longer screw and then this one down here doesn't need to be long because it's not doing anything other than keeping the 
side plate on. So there's some grease and some dirt and debris in the side plate. So put that in the parts tray. And we can pull out the thumb button now. Put that in the parts tray. Uh, might as well go ahead and remove the uh, might as well go ahead and remove the drag and so we can get that all cleaned out. So just hold on to the dial and uh, back that out. And then your dial ought to pop out once that's out of there. And there it is. And I'm just going to thread that back in there for now and put it in the parts tray so keep those together and keep them from getting lost. Uh, so there's only one side plate so this this one there's no screws over here so uh, in order to get that main gear out obviously we're gonna have to remove the uh, the nut and the handle here so you can do that either with a screwdriver a coin uh, I bet a quarter would fit in there it does or you can use a ratchet or a wrench So we can pull that handle off and that will allow us once we get this uh, pinion gear shaft or axle shaft or whatever you want to call it out of there then we'll be able to push out the main gear and there's no slit you know on the like you know some of them the slit for the thumb hole comes way down which allows you to pull this axle shaft and pop that through the slit and then you can get it out without having to take off the spring but on this one you can't do that the only way you're getting that axle shaft out of there is to take off the spring which involves let's see here uh, okay uh, okay so there's an e-clip yeah, there oh my god it's hardly even on there that thing was so sprung that I barely had to touch it with the screwdriver and it came off and then you've got a little retainer uh, it looks like just kind of a standard washer it's not cupped or anything but a little retainer washer and then you can gently let loose on that spring and uh, winkle the spring off of there yeah there and winkle the spring off of there and then uh, then you ought to be able to push the axle shaft through the other end and then your pinion gear falls out pinion gear is keyed so is the shaft so that goes on a certain way it's a d-shaped key and uh, uh, I didn't let's see here Okay, so there's no uh, washers there, and I think this thing, I think this comes out, and the question is, sometimes these things are reverse threaded, so you, you don't want to like, you know, over tighten it, you're not knowing which way it goes, and you probably want to wrap a, it really probably doesn't need to come out, but if you, you know, if we wanted to do some work on these scratches and burrs and things it might be helpful to get out so let's just see what happens here I'm gonna put a towel around it let's just see how hard this thing's gonna be to to get out of there it's hard to get any grip on it Oh, there it comes. It is reverse threaded. Okay, so running counterclockwise, it wasn't budging. And then I started to move clockwise, which is bass backwards. It's usually righty tighty, lefty loosey. Then this thing comes out, and we can take a closer look at that, do any filing that we might need to do. We can always run our spool over it. You know, I don't feel anything major there, but 
I'll just check that, do the fingernail check and see if any burrs need to be filed off. And I might run a really tiny file in there and get that burr out of the slot there. So now, I mean, this is going to be pretty simple because now all we got to do is pop out the uh, main gear. Uh, grease isn't terrible. But, you know, when you get a real, you don't have any idea of the history of it or anything, you know, it could have been service yesterday. But it's always a good idea, uh, real unknown history, to get in there and service it up proper. This this grease is, it's, it's you can see it, it's caked on. It's not completely viscous anymore. And so, yes, this is ready for service. Not terrible but definitely ready so that's about all there is to it because the anti-reverse mechanism there's a spring there and it's because the grease is hard that's not moving great but um, but that's pressed in so if you pop that out you're gonna wear down the post and you keep doing that and next thing you know uh, it's not gonna stay in place anymore there's really no need to take that out you can you can easily clean underneath there with some WD-40 clean it out and, re and re-lubricate it so that is pretty much all there is to disassembly on the uh, True Temper 327 so we'll take those parts over the sink and do some scrubbing and we'll be right back and just like that okay so Let's start working on some cleanup. So when I go to the sink like that, basically what's happening is I'm scrubbing thoroughly. I'm taking cotton swabs, and so I'm using hot water. That helps loosen grease. I'm using dish soap. That helps break up grease. And in some cases, I'm using WD-40 on a cotton swab and going down into the journals where the shafts ride to get any grease that's out of there. So uh, just lay all our parts out here. There is, by the way, a uh, shim washer that fits over the main gear shaft and rests against the main gear. So make sure you're aware of that. Don't lose that. Uh, get all this stuff out here for now. And then uh, there's always seems to be a little bit of grease left over in the teeth of the gears and when I was washing this one I noticed a problem that I think will be okay in the final analysis but right there you can see a broken a broken tooth and uh, I because this uh, is not a beveled gear um, it looks pretty symmetrical on both sides although you do have this indentation here I'm not sure which I think it probably that broken gear probably even as it was wasn't riding against the main gear so I think this end goes towards the body and I'm hoping that the main gear rides on it like that so that that broken tooth doesn't mesh with the main gear if it goes in like that uh, then you've got then you're going to have a problem where that broken tooth is going to mesh with the main gear but you want to end up getting in here and cleaning out any grease that didn't come out with uh, brushing and same way here on the main gear there's always seems to be some grease that just doesn't make it out and some you know it's good to just run that through there anyway because not all that grease is easily visible but it's in there so just run through there and there's some down in down in here and there might be sand and stuff in there too. It's one of the reasons why I like to take it to the sink 
in addition to just you know rubbing it down with WD-40 or whatever, uh, run it into the sink and with some hot water and rinse the thing so you don't have any grains that might cause wear on the reel. Just rinse those down the drain. Water just washes and rinses those out of out of the reel altogether. And then on these shafts, I like to take some steel wool, polish those up, make sure they run just as smooth as possible in there, and get off any residual grease. Same way on the pinion gear shaft. Okay, so now let's start reinstalling. Uh, dry that out a little bit better. And we're going to want to lubricate the anti-reverse pull which is in this reel always on but luckily it doesn't click it just rides on there and if you grease the cogs on the back side of the main gear it'll quiet it down I, I hate the anti-reverses that click whenever the anti-reverse is on because I can't stand that clicking sound and therefore I usually just turn them off and just keep my hand on the handle in case something grabs it or whatever because uh, I don't I hate that clicking sound I like anti-reverse I quite frankly I like anti-reverse it's always on for the most part and quiet and this one's gonna be a quiet one because it just rides I'm pretty sure it just rides on there without making much of a sound so now we can put our main gear back in there and uh, and our handle now this handle is kind of interesting in that I guess it's got a little hole in there that you can get some grease down in but it's got a cover over it unlike many of them where you can actually just see the post exposed but I'm going to force a little bit of oil in there well a few times I put pressure on that bottle and just uh, Hopefully I start seeing oil come out the bottom. Oh yeah, I got some in there now. Now it's starting to come out the bottom. Good. And you'll know it's gritty in there because every time you do this, you spin that around in there. And then you go, see how nice and white that paper towel is? And then and you go like that. That was clear oil when it went in there. So there's all kinds of grit and stuff in there so sometimes I'll run do several runs of this and kind of clean all that out of there but that's spinning well now and that is uh, keyed it's sort of a uh, flat on both sides and so you just fit that over the keyed shaft and uh, we'll hold on to the main gear and tighten that up. And now we can grease the main gear. And now we can, uh, I think we can go ahead and reinstall this. I don't feel any burrs that are sticking out. Uh, and I, I don't really have a file skinny enough to get in there, so I don't think I'll worry about that. I just have to remember to avoid that piece when I'm sliding the E-clip on there so that it slides in there nicely. So uh, remembering that this is... Uh, reverse threaded. I'm going to be screwing it in counterclockwise and then uh, greasing that 
shaft for the spool and a little bit down here where it rides on the housing maybe a little bit on the clicker maybe a little bit on the cogs on the base of the spool and uh, can't forget that we've taken our drag mechanism out so we're going to have to install that and this is a little bit strutty still some caked on grease on there look at that okay so now we can remove that screw and put that dial back in there and we're going to want to screw that all the way in which means that we're on we have no drag we want to get it flush with the housing and horizontal like that so that the tab on the pressure plate fits in that slot but we'll get to that in a minute once we get the main or the axle shaft in there so now we're ready for this and uh, we don't have any washer uh, we got to oil that dummy and uh, put that in there work that oil in there and then uh, we want to make sure that that broken end of that tooth doesn't mesh with the main gear and this is keyed so it's got a d-shaped key so and it's not going to affect it so here is the broken tooth and it's this half of the pinion gear that's meshing with the main gear so that tooth broken part isn't going to be an issue for us boy look at that look at that axle shaft you see that looks bent that's going to cause some wear and it's this part that's bent so the way I usually deal with this I don't think I'm going to do it this time because I think I can do it without the way that I usually deal with telling if an axle shaft is bent and then trying to get it straight is to take it to my drill press and in this case I'd probably put this into the chuck of the drill press now usually of course if it's d-shaped like this it, that might be more of an issue I might use the totally cylindrical end so that it's perfectly centered in the chuck this would be hard to center and then turn on the drill press and the extent to which the other end is wobbling <laughs> wobbling like that uh, will, will indicate how much bend there is in the thing and then you can kind of bend and then run the drill press and bend again until that thing spins smoothly and you don't have any wobble or vibration but I, I see a clear bend in this one you know it's bending that way and so I'm just gonna try to straighten this eyeball it I think that's much better now that I've wiped all the oil off the shaft I'm much happier with that. It's not, not perfect, but it's not nearly as bad as it was, and I don't think it's bad down by the pinion gear at all. So I don't think it's gonna do unusual wear on the gears. So now we're ready for our spring. And then the fun part, 
Well, first of all, I remember this E-clip was rather sprung, so I'm going to tighten that. And hopefully not pinch my fingers and get a blood blister. And then we have that little retainer washer. This is where you can shoot things across the room if you slip with that spring while you're while you've got this washer and you're trying to put the e-clip in if you let loose of that spring it's going to shoot them things across the room there so now the e-clip is in the little retainer. Why that shaft still still looks bent, but I don't think it's bent down by the. Again, if I was real serious about it, I could take it out to the drill press and get it back into shape. But I'm not gonna mess with it. I really don't think it's affecting the the gear part. I think it's up higher in the shaft where that bend is most significant. So now we got to put our pressure plate on and that tab, that tab right there goes in that slot and that hole fits around the shaft of the, where the, uh, the spool shaft and then you can put on your brass drag washer and then your fiber washer then your spool then your another fiber washer and then your god that thing's beat up and then that now I have to be where find out where the heck that bad spot is Okay, so I'm going to need to come in either that way or that way with the E-clip to avoid that burr that's in there. Now it's fitting in there. Uh, wasn't fitting in there right before, probably because it was, that burr was in the way. Okay, so now we're ready to put in our thumb button and our side plate and our long screw threaded through the thumb button checking to make sure that's working properly oh wait a minute what did we forget to do? We forgot to make sure that the anti-reverse pawl was sprung out so that it rides on the, uh, and I'm not going to be able to, to do that without taking off that blasted E-clip again. So that uh, anti-reverse pawl that has to be sprung out here before you put the main gear in so that it rides on there. Now, let's make sure the anti-reverse is working and it is. So we're back in business. It does make a little clicking sound but not as bad as some of them. And you're going to live with that because you can't turn it off. So now we'll grease our pickup pin.
and work that around, or I mean oil it and work it around. Inspect it. There's a there's a cut in the pickup pin line or there or line cut. I don't see one in the uh, in the spinner head, but uh, I hopefully you can see that there is a cut in there, and so we're going to have to take and file that off. Now I'll get the D-shaped hole over the D-shaped shaft and reinstall the spinner head nut. pickup pin is retracting and operating as it should and so now the only thing left to do is to clean off any oils here and use some adhesive and install our uh, line stop so what I'm going to do here is thoroughly clean the spinner head um, and I'm going to do that I wiped it good and I'm going to use a little bit of alcohol uh, just to make sure that there's no oil residues or anything on there so that the uh, adhesive that I'm going to use to adhere this o-ring will stick and I've chosen a contact adhesive that's supposed to remain relatively pliable but also hold the thing firmly and uh, so I'm going to take and uh, put some of this on the on the ring And then I'm going to center that ring the best that I can onto, onto the spinner head. And I'm going to leave that set upright until that's completely set up so I'll let that set overnight and then we should be finished with the uh, service and repair of this okay so the goop is all set up and dry and I'm ready to put the cover back on and I've got a uh, casting plug on there so you know, if it falls you'll be able to hear it but I'm going to push the button and you can hear the casting plug fall and I'm going to let go of the button and you can hear that fall so the brake stop or the line stop is working and uh, seems to be working fine now and so there you have it a circa 1975 true temper blue heron series number 327 spin cast reel on a nice vintage rod by the way I don't know the brand of the rod but it sure looks good on there I tell you what thanks for watching